Hello and welcome to our podcast on motifs in film. This is one of those literary level things that we see how films have in common with literature. Let's go ahead and see what we're talking about. So just like in literature, a motif is an item that repeats multiple times throughout a text. So a motif could be an item, like a physical thing. It could be a color, an action, dialogue, character, or even a musical theme heard throughout the score. And so just like many of these other overlaps with literature, a motif, its patterns, and its evolving, and its changing can help reveal a theme of a text. So while we are talking about motifs today, and motifs by our definition repeat three or more times, we are also looking at the general idea of repetition in film. So if we see something that only shows up one time, we're going to call that item a symbol. If we see an item repeat two times, we call that a dangling cause pair. And you can refer back to the podcast on dangling causes or foreshadowing for more information. And then if we see something three times or more, we're going to go ahead and call that a motif. And so why are motifs important? They do help advance the plot. We are able to track these motifs throughout the course of the plot. We can see how they stitch things together, how they are like a grounding piece of a text because they keep coming back. And the one thing we'll talk about is that the change in the motif by the end helps reveal that theme. And so here's a visual example there. You can see in the background we have the typical hero's journey structure that we have used in the past, so our 12 steps of plot. We have then overlaid that with the four stages of film that we use and talk about in film class, setup, complicating action, development, and climax. But perhaps the stars represent the pattern of a motif where some item or some musical theme or a color or a character or a saying repeat multiple times. And so maybe in the setup, this motif starts and we don't really know if we should pay attention to it. But then a couple minutes into the film, we see it repeated again, and then again, and then we see it repeated a fourth or fifth or sixth time. But the point is, A, we're tracking the motif and writing down the context of where each motif is occurring. What is going on in the film when we see this motif again? So how does it repeat? But then most importantly, how does the motif and its meaning and its context change by the end of the film? That is what's going to help us get to that deeper interpretive level through the observation of a motif. And so a quick general example before we move into more specifics of each of the types of motif. This comes from the Hollywood classic Baywatch from a couple years ago. And so the motif in Baywatch is that the character of Matt Brody, played by Zac Efron, is never called by his real name. The other characters can't muster the respect to call him by his real name because they don't like him. They have great disdain for him. He's an overly cocky character, and so they want to bring him down a notch. But the point is, the motif is that they never call him by his real name. So the first time, he's just called Fresh Face. Then he's called One Direction. Then they call him New Kids on the Block. Then they call him Gold Medal. Then they call him High School Musical. Then they call him Jonas Brother. Baby Gap, Malibu Ken, and then eventually by the end of the film, when everybody has come together as friends, when everybody has learned that Matt Brody is a respectable person and he has grown and become more mature, the leader of the team finally calls him Brody. And you can see the motif coming full circle there where he has been called all these other names. And then by the very, very end of the film, it has changed. And now he is called by his real name. And so here's what we mean by the variation of a motif. In Harry Potter 3, The Prisoner of Azkaban, there is a motif of the dog. And so at the very beginning, the family visitor is talking about how parents these days don't raise good children, just like some dogs don't raise good pups. Then Harry encounters a dark, seemingly demonic dog in the park while he's waiting for the night bus. Then the tea leaves in his tea form the image of a black dog. Then the clouds form a dog. Then they encounter a dog in the wilderness. And then as they are taken into the shrieking shack, the dog's footprints walk away from them. And eventually we understand the concept that Sirius Black is an animagus where he can change his form, literally changing the motif 
from that of just a simple dog or references to it or in the tea leaves or in the clouds to a very important person and character for the film. A motif doesn't have to be exactly the same throughout an entire film. In terms of structure, you can have that variation and it is still part of that motif advancement. So some quick examples here from the James Bond movie Skyfall, there is a motif of an item, a physical thing. It's this ceramic bulldog with the British flag on it. That British bulldog repeats at least three times throughout the film. In Inception, we have another physical item that repeats. It's the idea of this picture in the upper left of a man putting his arm around a young boy and the boy is holding a paper pinwheel. And so later it becomes just the picture. It is just the picture later. And then ultimately toward the end of the film, it's the physical pinwheel still existing. And so we have that item as motif. We can have a specific color as a repeating motif. So like, so for example, in Raiders of the Lost Ark, while this film is in color, the color of red really serves to highlight certain elements. And so when we see something in that bright fire engine red, it draws our attention and, and we are to pay attention to that more. In the Lego movie, for example, we have actions as motifs. And in this case, it is the idea of holding hands. Throughout the film, the two characters come so close to holding hands. And then by the end, they finally do. We have the concept of dialogue as motif. And this example comes from Pitch Perfect, where before competitions, the singing group will get together, all put their hands in and go one, two, three, and then sing a note. And at the very beginning, they do it well. As the team is reforming, they struggle. There are times where they can't even get their act together enough to go one, two, three, and sing the note. It's just so discombobulated and not working together. And then by the end, do they get that little pregame huddle down? you can notice the change. We can also talk about characters as motifs, where we potentially have kind of a side character, a static character, who is not necessarily instrumental into the advancement of the plot, but that character continues to repeat at key moments in the film. For example, in the movie The Proposal, the character of Ramon seems to be a character as motif. He invades the plot every couple minutes in various ways, usually funny, but we can see where he fits in, the context of him fitting in, and deduce why his repetition matters as an evolving motif. We can also have musical themes as motifs, and sometimes these are hard for students to pick out because it forces us to take our attention away from the visual plot that we are seeing and really listen critically to the score or the background music, you know, the sound track of a movie and really hear the musical patterns embedded in that score. So for example, in Slumdog Millionaire, the character of Latika has her own musical theme. So when she is on screen or when characters are thinking about her, there is a musical theme playing in the score to remind us that this character is on screen or that she is being thought about. And so if we're paying attention to the score, we can pick out those musical themes as well. And so as we practice tracking and observing changes in motifs, this is the chart that you will see embedded in those practice opportunities. Now on the left hand side, this is where we just identify what is the motif. You know, is it the color red, the color yellow, a musical theme, characters holding hand. We then identify what type of motif it is. Then we move to the middle section. And so we have five bullet points here, but the motif may repeat only three. It may repeat up to seven, eight, whatever. But with each one of these bullet points, we write down what is happening when we see the motif. So if we are seeing characters reach out and attempt to hold hands at the start, we write down that they were unable to hold hands. They got close, but they did not actually touch for that first meeting. And then the second time we see it, ooh, they were being chased by the bad guys and there was a poignant moment and they almost touched hands, but they did not. And then the third time, what's going on? Is it a chase scene? Is it a quiet moment? Is it when they're about to be caught? Is it when they're about to be released? And then ultimately, that last time we should see a change in how the motif is shown in the film. And then the biggest part and most important part is that right-hand column where we look at the evolution. So at the first instance, the motif is simply maybe characters trying to hold hands, trying to show friendship. But after the course of the movie and all of the 
depth that we are better able to understand. By the end, the motif has changed and represents or you know, symbolizes, that's the literary part, that it is great friendship or perhaps love or perhaps something else. When we're filling this out, that last column is really what we'll be looking at to see your interpretation and evaluation of this motif. Usually it goes from something very simple, like just a desk decoration, like the ceramic bulldog in Skyfall, but by the end, it means something deeper for the story or for the character. It is your job to figure out what does that mean. And so that is about it. Motifs are recurring patterns in film three or more times. There could be variations. It doesn't have to be the same exact item every single time or reference every single time. Time, it could change and be slightly different, but overall the point is to observe, track, and look for the change in the motif. How does what we started with differ from what we ended with? That evolution of the motif is what's going to help us figure out theme. Thanks so much for watching. As always, if you have questions, please bring those into class and we will get those answered as well as we can. Thanks so much and we'll see you soon.